that last story um, from uh, uh, Lori drove me out of my mind. And we're not sure if it's uh, fallen into enemy hands. Of course it has fallen into enemy hands. Of course it has. No, no. The Roadrunner has it, and he's, he's staying it because he's had enough of the coyote, and he's going to... Anyway, um, tonight we're doing kind of a show on um, history makers, and there's another history maker that I want to introduce you to um, that uh, I think is... Well, let me just put it this way. I have never said I would campaign for anyone, um, but this man, I would. I think he has been railroaded in his own state um, by the media um, and um, by uh, the senior senator of that state. And I, I, I've never met anybody that was more um, um, moderate in his tone. And uh, he's, he's a guy who should be the Supreme Court uh, justice someday. His name is Mike Lee, and he's joining me now from his home state in Utah as well. Mike, how are you, sir? Doing great, Glenn. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not as good as person as you are, um, and so I would have not a, true, Glenn. Not uh, true. I would have a really super hard time with what Mitch McConnell has said about the Tea Party, and that that because they weeded out all of these extremists, um, that that's why they won last night, as we have shown with. Um, uh, uh, Tim and Mia and uh, also um, uh, the woman from uh, New York that just won, what's her name, uh, Stefanik, Elise, that the Tea Party is the furthest thing from extremists, racists, and everything else. H how, do you, how, how do you handle this, Mike? How, how, do you, how do you sit back down at the table and say, okay, I know you have a skewed view of the world and the what happened, but here's how we're going to move forward. How do you do it? Well, first of all, I, I, I like to think that he's not talking about me or any of the people you just mentioned, any of the people that uh, he and I both work with and like. Um, I, I'm not sure he's, who he's referring to there, but I, I can say there are a growing number of us in the House and in the Senate who are committed to principles of constitutionally limited government. Uh, those are principles that are baked into who we are as Republicans, and not just as Republicans, but as Americans. So, you know, I'll continue to stand for those principles. And on many of those issues, uh, he and others within the Republican establishment happen to agree with us. I stand by you're a better man than I am. <laughs> and that was proof. Okay, so... Um, the president, I think, is, and I hope this is, I hope this is wrong, but I think that he feels abandoned by the Democrats. He is abandoned by his his base now. His base is mad at him. The real radical left is mad at him. Um, the the Democrats don't want anything to do with him. Hillary Clinton is going to be campaigning here soon. There's no love lost between the two of them. She's already distanced herself. Um, the president came out yesterday. The White House uh, confirmed to ABC that they, he's going to put an immigration bill um, through with just the pen, executive order, by Christmas. He said that's going to happen. That means before the Republicans can come into office. I don't think the Republicans are prepared to deal with a true radical if he chooses to become one. What is the plan? What is your sense of what you guys are going to do when you get in? What, what, tell me that there's just a, a backlog of stuff that you're just going to start passing and putting on his desk and showing that he's the obstructionist here. Yeah, I think that's an important part of it. I think there are a lot of pieces of legislation that will move fairly quickly. We have to remember that under the Democratic leadership in the Senate, we haven't been voting. I mean, it's, it's not just your standard garden variety gridlock in Washington that people have come to loathe and expect. Uh, it's, a, it's a new form that has existed over the last four years where Harry Reid's using this procedure known as filling the tree, which means he doesn't let people allow amendments, which means that the legislative process grinds to a halt. Uh, that's going to be reversed, and we're going to start pushing legislation through again. We've got this backlog of 400 bills passed by the House, uh, most of those with bipartisan support that haven't seen the light of day in the Senate. What are they? Uh, give, me, give me the bills. Bills like those will... Okay, let me give you a, a good example that needs to be passed right away. The RAINS Act stands for Regulation in Need of Scrutiny. And what it says is that for each new major federal regulation promulgated by an executive branch agency, uh, those rules will not take effect 
without Congress first enacting them into law and the president signing them into law. In other words, it, it puts the lawmaking power back where it belongs wow. in the legislative branch. That's going to be Over passed the last by the Senate? decades or so, we, we've outsourced that. Well, yeah, it's been passed by the House each year, every year for the last three years in a row, and then it's languished in the Senate. I, I, I think we could get enough votes. Uh, I'm not certain, but I, th I think it's very possible we could get enough votes to get it passed in the that Senate. That would be huge. That yeah. would be huge. What else? It would be, be huge. Um, I also think we'll pass a budget for the first time in nearly six years. The last time we passed a budget, there was no such thing as the iPad. And, uh, you know, without <laughs> a budget, amazing. you can't have itemized appropriations. Without that, there's no accountability. Is there, the executive branch. Is there um, uh, if he decides to go radical and, um, and, uh, and say, I'm going to legalize these illegals, um, what does the Republican majority do? Okay, I think what we should do is turn to the guidance given to us in the Constitution itself and by James Madison in Federalist 58, which is if he overreaches, if he does something he's not supposed to do, we withhold funds for implementing that thing which he proposes to do. So if, for example, he wants to issue a bunch of green cards to people who, under our immigration code, are not eligible for those green cards, we could pass something saying none of the money we appropriate to you may be used for this purpose. Uh, that's that's what I think we should do and what I'm going to push for. Um, do you feel like you have enough counsel and enough people there that have have studied the Cass Sunsteins of the world because they seem to always make everything a win-win for them and a lose-lose for you? I, I'm reminded of uh, how the shutdown of Congress went uh, or the government went last time. They seem to win every time. Win-win for them, lose-lose for you. We have... Do you think you yeah, have a good team on the GOP that understands this? Look, I, I think that team's getting better all the time. This is not easy, as you know, Glenn. I know. Um, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, and, and, and I, I, can't, I can't tell you right now that I'm certain that we can win that battle, but we, we're sure going to try. And uh, if, if they run us over trying, that's one thing. But we do have to undertake that effort. This is the rule of law. This is something that ought to concern every American, Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative. This is just an American issue, an issue that focuses on the rule of law. We've got to defend that. Mike, I, I have to tell you, I, am, um, I, I meant what I said at the beginning um, of the uh, interview, and I've said it to you in person and before. Um, I think you are a remarkable man, and I am glad that you and a handful of others are in uh, the Senate and in uh, Congress because I think you may end up being the, the men who save the republic, um, it, it, quite honestly, from us, from ourselves, because we have handled it so poorly. And uh, I appreciate your statesmanlike attitude here. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Glenn. All right. Back in just a minute.